Hey, it's Joe Glines from the Automator, and today we're covering the what we automated this week. Now, again, this week was a really heavy client consultation week, uh, but let's go ahead and jump into it here. Share my screen, and oops, wrong hotkey. Uh, let's see, tools, uh, recently modified files. So this goes back a week, and let's see, I haven't looked at this, uh, 64 files. Um, again, a lot of it's client work. Um, which which may or may not be on on here because some stuff we do like this is client work here but uh, a lot of stuff we do on their computers right and we try to encourage them to give us copies of it they don't always do it um usually we just make sure if they're not giving us copies of it that we help them back them up um, depends of course on the level of the client and their skills so linkedin ad scraper so this one this is actually let me get back to here this is for a client they do work with um LinkedIn ads, and this just ha allows them to go and get a bunch of stuff. Um, also, he's looking at their ad campaigns and has to automate building hyperlinks to for each campaign and then writing an email, which the one he sent me, he said it took him like 27 minutes, and we made a script that should get it done in about eh, 10 seconds, you know, plus he can, he'll have to add a little more comments, but... For the most part, we gave him all the stuff he needs. He'll probably take 30 seconds to write a little bit of a personalization to it, but it'll pop open in his email. Uh, actually, it just copies it all to the clipboard that he can paste it wherever he wants, if he's in the email or wherever he is, right? So that's awesome. It's giving it with uh, HTML tags with hyperlinks, and we even bolded and colored words to make it more emphasized, which is nice because you can't always do that. Like with hot strings, you can't do that natively. You have to program around it a little bit. With the WinClip API, you're able to set HTML uh, in your clipboard, and that's how we're doing that. So that's a really good one. I'll try to remember to put the URL up here of, of where to grab that library. So we, yeah, we, well, we also identified a really weird bug with UIA. I don't know if it's maybe a bug. Firefox apparently does a different thing with its tabs and most recent tabs and keeping track of them compared to Chrome and Edge, Edge uh, Chromium browsers. And... Uh, so we, we didn't want him to have to, we wanted him to have a robust tool. So we, Irfan did it in Rifadium, but we realized we were going to use Firefox because I told him the client, he has a dozen, two dozen tabs open. He can't just shut down Chrome, you know, and only, you know, use it to launch. So um, he's like, we're like, okay, let's switch it to Firefox. And then it turns out getting the last active tab in Firefox isn't super easy anymore. So maybe we'll put a call into Descalada and ask him if he knows a way to do it and keeping track of which tab is active and stuff in Firefox with UIA. And uh, anyway, so we moved it over to Edge and we're waiting to hear back from the client to see if he's done it. Danny, um, again, we did some custom tools for a radiologist. So th those are these. Some interesting stuff. At some point, we'll figure out examples that we can share with you of in concepts because some of the stuff is applicable. Uh, Kevin is an accountant and we were doing some stuff with his Locus. It's a API service for lawyers and whatnot um, for we automate going through. And, and he told me this, it was amazing. He's like, yeah, my stuff stopped working. And we realized it's because we used through one of his other accounts he has with Locus. And he's like, oh yeah, I closed that account because it was a thousand dollars a year per account and I wasn't really using it. And I'm like, yeah, good, good reason to close it. Um, so we had to uh, migrate it to his current account. So we've got that almost done. We just need another call to, there's one more thing we have to do in person with him. Um, get IP addresses. Um, this one, so in V2, the getting your IP address changed and also getting the, um, you know, I updated it where it gets both your Wi-Fi IP addresses, your, your LAN IP, your public IP addresses and your private IP addresses. Um, toggle notifications, this was really cool. Um, it's not quite done yet, and I'll show you once we have it working, but we found this way to do use SC query, uh, and it, the first example was with PowerShell, but we realized after we could just do it straight away, and we were toggling notifications, so I can hit a hotkey now and toggle whether I get notifications, because last week I was recording, I think, this video, and Isaiah had pinged me, and I'm like, I want to be able to quickly, I don't want to have to go find my notifications, and I turn off in the system tray like i turn that off so i can't do that there i have to go a level deeper um which maybe i should rethink turning that off but we i'm like hey can we use these uh notif this sc query approach to disable this service and um i think we got there it was an interesting thing um we're working on for the hero members uh, an extract of all of our videos including our 280 hours of videos that we have on auto hotkey for the hero members 
and Irfan had them all in different places and we were confused. So I think we finally have a file now that we can dump into the database and give to hero members. But it, it's really amazing because it searches not just across like your titles and tags but all or description, but also your subtitles, which YouTube doesn't do that. And maybe it's because of speed and how much it would have to do. But our tool allows the hero members to find where something was mentioned in the video and the time point. You can double click it and open that video at that time point. So it's really, really cool. Um, and we use, yeah, that, the blur. I think I demonstrated this. This is now a public one. We can blur parts of the screen, which is really, really cool. And it sticks to that window, which is handy. Um, highlight Chrome. This one, which we haven't made a release yet, but it actually you can hit a hotkey and it will put a border using UIA around the active tab. Um, sometimes I'll have, especially in incognito mode, I'll have 30 of these things open and I can't tell what's the active tab because they're all dark and even if you change your theme, that doesn't change. So we used UIA to, to do that. This raw edit, this is really cool. Let me show you, uh, Rizwan's working on it right now, but let me, let me launch it here. See how it, oh, yeah, it's, um, he is currently working on it, so unfortunately I can't launch it. Oh, wait, was that, no, that, well, here's an earlier version. Now, this was the original version where he had this, which I didn't know why, and then we had a split start and suck time with the media players. You can drag a video in here, pick a start and an end time, and hit split video, and it gives you what you extract, right, which is really, really cool. Um, unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, but I said, that's not a bad start, but I wanted some extra functionality or a simpler way to do it. We didn't need to have that list view on the left with the different paths to files, because that's not something that people be doing. Um, but yeah, we're building in a really cool tool, because you can use FVMPEG to just rip out sections of a video in min milliseconds. Like, it's crazy. You could have a three-hour video and just grab, oh, I want eight minutes in for four minutes. And it's done like that. Like if you had did that in VS Code, I'm sorry, not VS Code, uh, DaVinci Resolve or, you know, an editor, you usually have to re-render those videos and it can take a while. Oh, apparently I didn't disable my notifications. Um, all right, so I paused notifications for now. But uh, again, I want to have a hotkey to do that. Um, so let's see, we were uh, quick blur. Joe's hot, then we did that. Quick raw edit. So I just did that. All right, so test. Video cutter. These were all earlier versions of that. Old, yeah, effortless. So this is what we were borrowing from our other script for dropping the thing onto the GUI. Flexifinder. We're doing a couple updates. I'll mention that once we're done implementing it. But one was every time you launch it, at least the way it was initially, it would show up on the screen. And I said, hey, that, that should be something that's not displayed. If you've already run it before, we don't want it to show the, the search bar. It's just... If it's brand new, you definitely want them to show that. Um, I don't know why there's one with zero kilobytes. That's weird. Um, so we have configuration file for that. The get active path. I didn't know we made any updates to that, but that's a really, if you haven't gotten that one, really cool script to give you the active path of whatever program you're on. Like I can hit it right here. Control shift C is my hotkey. Oh, wow. Because I turned off notifications. Um, those do buy, it uses the, um, those notifications. And so I turned those off. So that's why we're not actually getting the path. It's funny. Uh, but yeah, that, um, can't demonstrate it right now. Anyway, um, get active pass, all these. I don't know why that got updated. That's interesting. Get IP address. As I mentioned, I was working on that. The XL, we, we were, um, doing a call. It was interesting in the hero call, a user was, using UIA for automating like Excel of inserting a, um, a shape and we were talking about using com instead and, and which I didn't discuss in the video uh, when, when the whole call with him but I was going to say was he's not automating like reporting he's automating work like actually actively using work and, and that definitely is it, it does make a little more sense to be well I don't know if it makes more sense but he just wants something simple, and what he's doing with UIA is, especially because he's having, not having problems with UIA, so it's fine, right? It works fine. He wants to draw a rectangle, like hit a hotkey to start drawing a rectangle. Okay, that's that's fine. Um, you you still could use COM for that, but it it's um it's yeah it's not like creating a report and bolding it or you know setting or getting values, which is more how we are are typically using it, where it's a. He needs something much more dynamic and 
Um, and the stuff in the ribbon, which Irfan shared during the call, was available in UIA much easier to trigger. So, uh, yeah, so we, we went through that. Then we had to make an update to our GUI because uh, people, some people, when they sign up for stuff, were putting asterisks in their names, and for some reason it was breaking our query. So we updated that. Prompt Assistant. I don't remember what we changed in that, but that's a great tool. It's what I used to launch uh, recently modified files. Um, it is a paid tool, but it's really, really helpful. It's much simpler purposely and, you know, by design and everything for then QAP, QAP, quick access pop-ups, a great tool. But it when you go to add something new or um, it, it takes a lot more time because there's a lot more to select from. And we didn't want that. We wanted something simple. Also, we can import and export um, your stuff, which makes it easy to share with other people, which is awesome. This virtual camera, this is what, I don't have it on right now, but I can, I can turn it on. And so here, if you look over me, sorry, my bad. So um, this has this text here and I can hit a hotkey and it pops up here and I say, thanks. Now you'll notice here, I don't have any spaces. What I changed it was now when I enter something, it pads both sides just so it's a little bit easier. So I just made that little tweak, but it's really cool. OBS can read a file on your computer. And um, I just realized you didn't see the other end of that. Let me go back to this. If I hit a hotkey, this comes up here, and that's what I had typed when uh, you weren't looking. Uh, and notice it's padded here, but if I just put Joe without any spaces and hit enter, and then I hit it again, you'll see it's padded with spaces, right? And it was, it's a simple thing, but I'm like, you know what? I would rather this thing get presented. Let's go back to here. You can see it with, with some padding on the, on the um, outsides of the text. Because usually I have a URL on there and it just looked a little funny. So I made a minor tweak to that one. Um, let me go back, make sure I'm on the right thing. Here we go. And let's see, uh, virtual camera, Telegram bot. So we have, we automated sending messages to Telegram to remind people about the hero call. Unfortunately, with daylight savings and stuff, it, it ended up um, having a little bit of a bug. So we, we changed it to our private group, um, meaning the automators, uh, the four of us. And then we got it working again and moved it back. But also, I realized during one of the calls, um, Irfan's like, oh, hey, I got a phone call. I'll be right back. And, and I'm like, you know, I have my webcam on almost all the time. So they can see if I'm busy. Like, they can look up. If they ask me a question, then they look at my webcam. And they see I'm on the phone or I'm not there. They're like, oh, he's not there. But they often don't have theirs on, which is fine. But they, if they're going to step away, they need to tell us they're stepping away. And I realized, hey... Why don't we use Telegram? Why don't we make a hotkey where we hit it and it will send that message into Telegram to our group saying, hey, I've stepped away, right? So um, it'll just broadcast it to our group. So it's a very simple thing. They don't have to disrupt because often someone will be talking and then they will cut in and say, hey, I have to blah, 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 blah. And it's like, it really doesn't matter. Like just use Telegram in the first place, but it takes longer to go find it. But hey, a hotkey will take care of that, right? So... Um, that'll be cool. Oh, and I think that's what the Teleshare is. So I don't think it's done yet, but that's what we're working on. Um, this checklist tool, let me open this one up. This one, it still needs a little more work, but um, you get the idea. And actually, I don't know which one's which. I think this is the sub, I'm going to assume that's the, I should look at the date. And I don't remember what hotkey, let me see here. Control home. Okay, that's a bad one to me, but whatever. Notice this checklist. This is really, if you cross something off, it, if you check it, it crosses things off and it remembers where you are. So if I reload the list and we can change between lists. So this one, I can change between lists, but I can come in here and I can actually edit these lists. So a um, very cool thing. Again, we're not quite done with it, but we're getting really close to where we can share that one. Um, it's meant to be used in a couple ways. One is we have a checklist for all of our downloads. Hey, when we go do this thing, every time we need all these things checked off. But then there's other ones where like, hey, I got an hour and I need to get these things done. And I don't want to, usually I write little sticky notes or something or I write my notepad and then I cross them off. And that crossing off is very rewarding. It's a very mental stimulation of like, I got something done. So I wanted to be able to do something like that. And that's what this tool is going to allow us to do. Um, scraper, subtitle, again, more with the subtitles of searching. Yeah, look, there were a lot of different stuff. Um, and, they, and we have a zero call notify zoom note so we share this one this one is on the automator and anybody can download it but we don't have a link on there to jump to zoom we have it to go to the hero room where there's the link to zoom but what i realized was hey in our telegram group we can share a different version of this file which actually has the link to the zoom meeting 
So if hero members have it running and it says, hey, is hero member starting in five minutes or hero member started, they can click it right there and it opens Zoom to that meeting. So that was another one we did. Uh, very cool. Let me see. Is there anything else? No, we're good. So like I said, not a lot of um, new tools. We, we did a lot of consulting work this week. And uh, if you're interested in having work done for you, uh, we can save you. It's crazy. Like the, especially the radiologists we've been helping, they're overjoyed with like the value we're bringing to them because it just saves them so much time and they don't have to learn how to program, right? And other people who have more, they know how to program, but we can also help them, you know, point them in the right direction. Sometimes just, they just go to the hero calls, right? That's what they're for. And we help people, but sometimes they want something. This is why I found people like Isaias and Irfan and, and Maestrieth is they can do stuff in hours that would take me weeks. And when you realize what your time's worth, sometimes it's worth having someone else do it, even if it's just to get it going, right? To spend an hour to decide on the direction and to populate it with some of the work, and then you go back in, you know, and finish it, right? Um, but anyway, I hope you're doing well. Thanks for watching. Please like the video if you learned something. If you're interested in any of our courses, we do offer a double your money back guarantee. So if you're not happy, we not only we pay you back, we double what you paid for it. Um, and that hero group I mentioned, it's, I'm telling you, it's an amazing, amazing um, thing to do to join. And I highly recommend you join it. Yes, we make money off it. It's uh, $1.99 to start and then $15.99 a month. Um, you, I do. I Actually, I looked up Stephen. Someone just joined and they're like, I couldn't find the discount. I'm like, that's because it just gets applied. And it turns out that's not true. Um, there is a discount, which I'll try to remember to put up here on the screen. But yeah, um, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Cheers.